All right, let's uh, optimize coaching, scouts, all that fun stuff, and we will get the season underway. Screw it, might just be an all NHL night tonight at this rate. Uh, so let's see, Spalling, Spaling, Spalling, it's Spalling. Uh, Seventy percent fit. You will likely still be our NHL head coach this year. West Garth is a fifty-four. Hillis, sixty-four. McNeely, fifty-three. Danier, seventy-one. Slightly better fit. Of course, you know Spalling is a slightly better coach. Last chance to usurp. It's Harris, 64. Are you going to go with Donnie, who is the best fit for this team? As the head coach, McNeely stays as goalie coach. Let's see. Man, Hillis is an awesome, awesome coach. So he is in as the associate. Harris will be in... No, actually, it's going to be Spalling who's in as the assistant. And then NHL-wise, or AHL-wise, excuse me, Harris is the head coach, definitely. All right, we just need an AHL goalie coach. We'll try to have it be Hendricks because Jackson Hendricks is actually very, very good. Very, very good. So we'll max out this offer, and then we'll go for it. Again, God, it's going to... I wish I, I wish I had saved a, a, you know, a separate file just to see the, the what if. You know, it would have been our version of fucking what if. What if we did elect to take that offer sheet? And we are going to have outrageous remorse if old Mango does not have as good of a season as we need him to have. The biggest issue with this mode is the fact that you do have hidden attributes. You are not able to see someone's shot pass bias. That is a huge problem. Because as, as we know now, for years, shot pass was in the game. It was just hidden. That's why a few years ago, if you made David Posternock all 99 shots, he would still never lead the league in goals. Um, and it's because he would just never shoot the puck. So it's that idea now of, man, what if this guy has like a 14 out of 15 and is super likely to pass the puck? Man, if he's not taking shots, that's a huge problem. And is a waste. But again, maybe on St. Louis, he would have been awesome. We just don't know. We just don't know. So I think we have no choice but to set the over-under at 35 wins. Technically, it'll be 34 and a half. Given the fact that we are running the strongest team we have so far. Power plays are set up pretty damn well. Plus two and a plus one. Our defense has boosts across the board. No, you can't see that. Uh, you can only see that shot pass bias in uh, on the attributes tab when editing players. The problem is you go to edit players in this mode and it won't let you see the attributes. NBA, you can change whatever the fuck you want about a player. But for this game, whatever reason you get into franchise mode. And it's the it's like they think you're cheating, and it's like no, it's a, it's supposed to be a fucking franchise mode. It's supposed to be open world. Let me do what I want. Yeah, rarely as a fighter for this guy too. Dorian, we need you, buddy. We fucking need you to be an absolute stud. By the way, we haven't gotten a look yet at Maximilian Trigg. <laughs> One of the uh, kind of new boys to the team. Uh, the German, who is right now one of our top two defensemen with Etienne Morin. I believe we're welcoming Amir McNabb. <laughs> Fucking hear it. To the team as well. Love the part. Love the part. 
for Amir McNabb. Were there any of the new boys that we haven't looked at yet? I don't think so. Matsumoto, perhaps, but he's going to earn it. HL20, we could change player type. I don't understand. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. All I know is it, it was intentional. That was That's how it was explained to me. Is like, oh, well, creatively, that's what we wanted to do with the mode is not have people be able to edit uh, certain things about players, which I don't agree with at all. Not at all. All right. We start our season against Philadelphia. 69% locker room chemistry. Couldn't ask for any better. 81, 78, and 73. This team has improved. Absolutely, this team has improved. And Wheels, by the way, if you wanted to see the jerseys for the old good dudes, now is, uh, now is your time for the jerseys of the good dudes. But here we go. This is... This is our biggest season to date. I'm not saying I'm expecting playoffs, but literally all eyes are on Dorian Mangone to just have the breakout of breakouts this season. He has to deliver. And that absolutely sucks to be putting that much pressure on one player when we have other good players on this club. But that is 100% the situation that we are in. So. We're not off to a bad start this season. Again, I am barely, uh, barely invested in the uh, win-loss, win-loss. Give me one second. All right. 13, 10, and 2, though. I mean, we have a winning record heading into December. That's a rarity. Do we, the draft classes, I did not improve either. I've left it the same way. Um, the reason for that is the idea of that last draft was low quality, and there were some steals from the AI. So I don't think it's necessary and in a sense, too, it also helps the idea of letting the young stars of the modern NHL actually be the young stars and not be completely usurped by AI talent. So that was that was my goal. As we do now have a losing record. It's been a rough stretch for us as we enter 2031. Again, playoffs would be nice. I'm not banking on it. We definitely can't take a step back in terms of record. And right now, that's a real risk. Let's see if the game declares any blockbusters at this deadline. It does not. Approaching 30 wins. Three losses in a row since I said that. Jesus Christ, we've lost six in a row. Okay, we're going to be a worse team this year than we were last year from the looks of it. Maybe not. I think we have just improved enough. We did beat St. Louis in a shootout. 34 wins, three games to go. And it comes down to the final game of the season, so needless to say, setting the over-under at 34.5 was a damn good decision. It's Carolina, final game of the season. We lose. We did improve our record, but congrats to the person who bet the under. You got it by a game. But yeah, we set the line absolutely perfectly. Second time we've done that. 34, 39, and 9 is okay. We are hardly a bad team. It was technically an improvement. Our top scorers didn't deliver. Liam Ragnarsson was the top scorer. Where was Dorian? Dorian. 
I think we fucked up. I think we fucked up in holding on to him. That is very good depth scoring. Five 60 point getters. We've never had that before. But we put Stevenson, Gavin, and Mangon together to improve Dorian. Stevenson was the goal scorer with 37. Again, has a very good shooting category, but it does not equal Dorian's. I think we fucked up. I think we fucked up. I don't think Dorian's going to turn into the guy. That's tough. We did have good overall scoring within the top six. But ultimately, that wasn't what we needed. 40 points for Morin. Trigg had just 25. And in goal, a 904 for Dagan and an 899 for Enkvist. It's only one season, but man, oh man, am I not feeling overly confident in what just happened. Now, the positive is that scoring was down in general. There was not a single 100-point scorer in the NHL this season. And there were only five guys to hit 50 goals or more. So at least scoring was down, except if you're Evan Bouchard. But that, um, that's scary. That's real scary. Yorgiev, the winningest goaltender, but didn't have a shutout. Seven shutouts for Stuart Skinner now in Columbus and the save percentage king, Igor Shosturkin, at a 919, which means high-end scoring was down, but there was more, like the middle ground scored at a higher pace. Ah, uh, it's logic what's going on. And indeed, we can't we can't step away. I would guess Philip Pospisil is going to win the Calder due to the plus minus. Imagine if the draft class is OP. <sighs> Did we just screw up by not taking an offer sheet for four first round picks? We might have. We might have. St. Louis did not make the playoffs. Now, we don't know for sure if they would have with Dorian on their team. But they didn't make it without him. As the Vancouver Canucks have won the Stanley Cup. Belleville sends taking home the Calder Cup. Vancouver. Wins in seven over Pittsburgh. As Belleville sweeps Texas. That's like three, four years in a row with a sweep in at least one of the finals. I could get on board with everything that's happened. That's <laughs> fine. Vancouver led by Quinn Hughes, Jakob Verana, Pedersen, Nick Suzuki, Max Domi. And in goal, Jeremy Swayman. I can't get on board with that. In terms of the awards, Bouchard wins the Art Ross as well as the Hart and the Norris. Calder does go to Pospisil. Quinn Hughes wins the Conn Smythe. Spencer Knight, the Vesna. Jack Adams, the San Jose's coach. Brisson wins the Selkie for Vegas. Bouchard, the Ted Lindsay. David Posternock, the Rocket Richard. AHL wise, not sure how many familiar names we'll have at this point. Morgan Riley was the best defenseman. Jan Bednar, top goaltender. And Tristan Bros was the... Bros Bros. I've always, I've always heard Bros. Was the MVP of the playoffs for Belleville. Where did the St. Louis Blues finish this season? They were better than us. I am willing to bet that St. Louis make... Yeah, they, they missed by one point. If St. Louis has... Dorian on their team. They make the playoffs. Unless he really fucked with their chemistry. They would have made the playoffs. It's 
in this draft, Chistoff would not be a fit for us. Teammate utilization is one thing, but he has a good attitude. Jaden Wallace, we could not draft him. Again, doesn't have the character issues. Rob Miller, not eligible. Ted Marr, not eligible. Miles Carson, not eligible. So from the looks of it, we wouldn't have been happy either way unless there's somebody in the middle of the draft who would have worked for us. What about Alt Schuler? Doesn't work. Uh, Berard doesn't work. Character issues for Jacques Gervais. So we need a top nine draft pick to end up with Jacques Gervais. The question now... Petrovic, I wish, or Petrovic, I wish was available, but he's not. The question now is, is there a second player that is available that potentially could have been selected by us with St. Louis's draft pick? That is the question. Mixed results for Riley Curtis. It says he has character issues, but it also says he would mesh well in any locker room. Showing up as a medium nine. So I'm not viewing it as a disaster quite yet. But odds are, I mean, that would have been the guy that we would have been looking towards. If there's someone who's a late first round steal here. That fits the bill of problematic young player that needs an attitude Again, showing up as a medium nine. And would be available with that Blues pick. Unless they had made it to the, to the Stanley Cup final. Which we, we will never know if they would have. It's a toss-up for the first draft of four. In which we would have had St. Louis's pick. You could argue Yaskin's available. There isn't that player where we face Palm and say, yep, we screwed up. At least at first glance. And in terms of uh, second round eligible players, it's not looking too good for us. So honestly, maybe we're losers either way. The lack of players. Lack of players is, is there, and at the same time, our dude did not show up like he needed to. Anthony, Anthony. Somehow, some way. We just end up taking a fucking gigantic L regardless as yeah, we're through the second round. Uh, let's get the lottery results here. We'll be picking sixth as expected. There was no movement in the draft this year. Player retirements. Mika Zabanajad, the highlight. Panarin's gone as well. Huberto. Those three all break a thousand career points. Defensively, Dougie Hamilton's gone. Morgan Riley, Brett Pesci. The greatest of them all, Rasmus Ristolainen. And in goal, Linus Allmark, Peter Mrazek, Matt Murray. And our cap whale for the last few years, Anton Forsberg. All we can do now is hope to have a really solid draft. But this was a bit of a bummer season for us, really. Oh my god, if one of, if that medium elite changed his mind, the Winnipeg Jets are so stupid. As they left Miles Carson available, but we can't take him. Any other year, we'd be laughing at the Jets, but I can't take him. For still first ballot Hall of Famer, I'm on board. However, we did get the top nine pick that we needed. It's going to be Jacques Gervais. Listed as three years out, but could very well be a medium elite. 
Um, we could risk it for Riley Curtis, who had an awesome season with Everett. But three years out, unconfirmed magnetic. And again, might have been a guy available, but we cannot guarantee that had we taken that deal that the Blues wouldn't have one of these picks here. So I, I doubt we can say that Curtis would have been available too. But Jacques Gervais from Dracar is our pick. He is not a medium elite. He is a 64 medium top six. The typical player that we've been getting in the first round as of late. Not bad. Certainly not amazing. As we will take a look at where the other guy was selected. Did I go right past him? It was Curtis, wasn't it? Yeah, it was about the same. He was actually a point better than the guy. So, again, there was no guarantees Curtis would have been available. I mean, the Blues pick was there, but, again, they would have made the playoffs with our guy unless he was just a pure locker room cancer, which is a possibility. Um, so, in the second round, we have two players. There was this goalie and Noah Engel, who we... I was hoping we were scouting. We don't know enough about. So it's one guy. Uh, the Victoria Royals' Bobby Schmaltz. Concerns if he can handle a professional environment. Cares about winning. The Victoria Royals' centerman is our pick here in round number two. He is a medium 9, 61 overall. Nothing too special. Henrik, my friend. How the heck are you? I hope you're good. <sighs> All right, third round. If anyone wants to inform Henrik about what just happened. Feel free. It's possible for medium top sixes to grow to elite potentials. Yes. It is very unlikely, but it is there. Oh, good. You've been lurking. So you know what just happened to me and how I want to die. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Guy Daig, we're not allowed to take you. Uh, easy to say now, but should have taken the offer. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. That's, that's the feeling at the moment. All right, Aiden Delzato. Again, it's a Dan. I don't care if anyone's like, oh, it's supposed to be Aiden. A-D-A-N, a Dan. Fucking Aiden. Mike Pan is also available here in the third round. Cool. Can we get, like, the steal of all steals here? That would be cool, wouldn't it? Just to give me this really fucking good player. I'm going to rule out Gleboff. We have someone else who's a more natural fit that's, like, the same thing. Please, God, Norm Ald, also available. Galiev is not. Yeah, I mean, again, it sucks. Like you have this major moment, and then it's like, oh, like this this season, the past calendar year in this game has felt like a some of the choices in a Telltale game, where it's like it's this big decision. No, it isn't. Spoiler alert for Walking Dead Season 1. Cutting off Lee's arm doesn't make a fucking difference. You end up in the same spot no matter what. And that's what this choice was. God damn it. That's what this fucking choice was. Cut my own arm off and it didn't fucking matter. I love The Walking Dead. Oh, it's incredible. Those Telltale games were incredible. Thank God they actually finished the damn thing because, like, the company went under before the final season, but then they delivered the final season, and I thought the final season was amazing. I loved it. Oh, dude, the the Lee death? I, I, dude, if I'm spoiling a game from, what, 13 years ago? At least, at least 10. Yeah, it was like 2011, 2012 that season came out. I mean, that is one of the most famous character deaths in video gaming history. If someone hasn't heard about it at this point, that's their fault. We have 30 seconds to make a decision here. A.K.A. to call a timeout. As I'm trying to get as much information as I can before calling said timeout. Okay. Let's take a look at who's available here. It hasn't been a bad couple of selections so far. Obviously, it could always be better. We don't have a single goalie. We have a lot of defensemen. So Jackson Arnett, character issues, potentially five years out. Looks like a disaster. 
Hector Kron, again, the personality issues, potentially five years out. Dane Hughes, teammate utilization, three years out, but I got to be honest, I, I think it would be kind of cheesy to take him. I do. I do. He, he doesn't line up, and I'm, I'm desperate. Same for Amrit Hogan. I wish, but... And then Hughes, three years out. Like, he's the guy so far. Easily. And then there's two forwards. Mike Pan. Potentially three years out. That potential's looking scary. And Norm Ald, who definitely has the character issues, four years out. And it, it's got to be one of them. We won't have time to get multiple. So four years out for Ald at 18. Potentially three years out for Pan at 18. Or Del Zotto, three years out at 18, confirmed. It's got to be. It's got to be a Dan Delzato. It's uh, not the highest ceiling in the world, but we got to take what we can get. Round number four. Not much looking to be available here at this point. We got to look for the steals. Hopefully, what NHL game has the best GM mode? Oof. <sighs> That's tough because everyone does have its flaws. Oh, Skylar Janes. If we're, if we're exclusively talking EA NHL, because a game like NHL 2K8 is outstanding. Um, yeah, at the time, like NHL 10 in the phone system, it's very, it was very fun, very nostalgic. Um, probably couldn't pick NHL 10 because the phone system was a bit busted. They did make it better in the subsequent years. But NHL 11 to, like, NHL 15, 16, like, you really didn't get that much uh, in terms of improvement. I think it was NHL 17 was the year that overagers could actually be good, which might not have been the most realistic thing in the world, but that was the year that we drafted Freddie McDonough, the greatest draft pick of all time, and literally you can still search that. Uh, back when I didn't know what the hell lighting was, uh, Tukey 24, greatest NHL draft pick or greatest pick of all time. And you tell me getting a player like that isn't fun. Um, it's tough, man. It's tough because especially too. again, I, I mean, I've always played the hell out of NHL franchise modes, but especially, I mean, since NHL 16, I've had a, a presence on the YouTube Twitch side of things and, um, I'm obviously like in that top 1% of playing this game mode. And when you play a game mode that much, you're going to notice the warts that much more. And that can definitely kind of skew my opinion. And, you know, I, I'm probably a little bit more of a harsher critic because of it. Um, but I'd probably go NHL 17 because of that. I thought NHL 17 was a big, big year. That was the year I believe they added relocation. It was definitely the year that they upgraded the uh, arena customization as we know it now. Um, so it just gave you a lot more options. So I would go NHL 17. And again, if I'm not mistaken, that was the year that you could actually get some draft steals, which was great. Did I ever do GM Connected? 100%. And GM Connected was very, very fun. The biggest problem, like, I was in a league where we were using, like, a website. I forget what the hell it was. To keep track of our GM Connecteds, to keep track of, like, everything. Using, like, the in-game shit. It was really weird, but it was awesome. Uh, the only problem with GM Connected is that the menus were slow as fuck. That was the big issue. The menus were too damn slow in that era. It took forever to do anything. And the word was, oh, um, you know, people didn't play more than one season. And I swear to God, the only reason people didn't play multiple seasons is it took too long to fucking do anything. That is the issue. Um, so GM Connected today, I feel like would do a hell of a lot better. 
So GM Connected is a great idea. It's a great mode. It's just they didn't have the functionality that they needed at the time that it was there. Highest overall, I've seen a guy drafted to probably like a 96. I think we had a guy in like NHL 16, 17, Essa Hall. It was like a 96, 97. I don't think I've ever gotten a guy to a 99 back in the day. Although, actually, that might not be true. Again, I've had so many fucking franchise modes. Uh, we got to take a risk with someone. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Jackson Arnett. We'll say son of Jason. Maybe even grandson of Jason at this point. Let's go for Jackson Arnett. Got a guy named Kolar is up to a 98. Damn. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. That is pretty that is pretty nuts. I'm guessing morale off. Uh, let's risk it for this goaltender, Skylar Janes from the Prince Albert Raiders. Fringe starter to 57, morale on. That almost makes more sense to me because if you're on a great team, the morale system can really boost up people if you're on a good team that's winning. Let's take Santiago Doig. Yeah, this draft isn't isn't doing much for us. And our final pick will be Joffrey Pojar, the overager who's a low nine. Not an amazing draft for us. Not a terrible draft for us. Again, Gervais is a good pick. Some good subsequent picks, but no, no home runs. And again, it comes after just the very, very bizarre last calendar year that we've had. Dag is an RFA again. We have Chubaroff. I don't think Lindstrom improved at all, right? I think we do want to get Lindstrom in the AHL to improve. Again, I'll have to think about it, but we'll qualify Ankvist for now. Uh, defensively, Trigg is up to an 88. This is another guy that could skyrocket in terms of overall. And could potentially fetch us a nice little offer sheet. Etienne Morin needs his uh, big boy contract. We're going to try $7 million for eight years. Actually, we'll just give him the seven and a half for eight years. Morin's going to be a good piece of this team. Trig, I'd feel less confident in giving up, just for the record. I'd feel much less confident in moving on from him. I feel like defense is going to be very hard for us to get. All right, we can put Del Zotto in the AHL immediately. O'Neal, we're not going to sign. Fifth rounder in 2029. Terrible. Terrible. So he's never going to get signed. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I hate to say it because Costin and Letton will hold on to them for roster space, but I don't know if these guys really have spots anymore. Uh, on the right, Cole Brown, we got to qualify. Ablocator. I don't know about Samuelson and Romeo. They're both pretty bad. We have ended up with so many low nines. Can't sign Vic Drake yet. Can't sign Doig yet. Uh, Para definitely got to qualify. DeBoer. Matsumoto's still hasn't gone up in potential. Got to keep Miura. Probably still hold on to Pittis. Got to sign Rylan Lieb. And then at center, Gavin, Ragnarsson, Jaeger, Stevenson, all RFAs. And it could lead to some interesting potential offer sheets here. We have the money to keep them pretty much no matter what. But this could be interesting. Gervais, we can't sign yet unless we want to play him at the NHL level. Same for Bobby Schmaltz. <sighs> All right, so forward wise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we got room for a couple more forwards. We'll go up to the best of the bunch. Mr. Besser, what's happening? Uh, we'll hold on to Brunstrom just for his rating. I think. Yeah, we'll just hold on to the highest rated guys here. So Brunstrom will stick around. Romeo. We're going to let the UFAs go. So Andre Molnar, fifth rounder in 2023. Uh, just never, ever developed. So he's going to let go. And Tommy Sievenen, sixth rounder in 2024. If he could skate, he'd be dangerous with that passing, but he cannot fucking skate. So there's no real point in keeping him around. And he's 26. And then Liam Samuelson, seventh rounder in 2029. Also just never going to make it. Uh, Sam, it's going well. No complaints. And then Christopher Thibodeau, again, had the shot in the skating, but... He's just never going to make it. So, I think we're good there. Uh, Setian Morin rejected that initial contract. That doesn't surprise me. Goalie-wise, we're good. Defense, UFA for Morin. Again, we want to try to get him signed long-term. If we can, we have the cap to spend. Molnar, Sievenen, Samuelson are gone. That just leaves the RFA. What age in franchise is kind of GG for immediately becoming good? 24 is it, it's pretty much the cap, yeah. And I mean, if you're a 72 overall at 23, even with medium elite, that, that's still a long shot for sure. All right. I think we're good in terms of the signings. I want to get this team set up. Am I a fan of watching an in-game gameplay? 100%, and we always do in the playoffs. Um, slider wise, more often than not, I, I go back and forth between game speed at, at two or a three. I always put up attribute effects. Um, the difference is, um, with my rosters and I can show you, uh, actually here, I'll show you in a second. Uh, so the big thing for me is custom rosters. Um, I always create my own rosters here. This is going to give me a minute to think about what I want to do. Um, the big thing that I always do is, or at least I have done that for the last year or so, for example, is Connor McDavid's player card. I'm not afraid to have people with 99s in categories where they deserve it so that someone like Connor McDavid doesn't have to have 85 checking, 90 defensive awareness to be a high rating. He gets to keep more accurate ratings. So then when you get down to players... Like Yanmark, he'll still keep the 99s in the less important attributes. Deking, hand-eye, puck control, poise, uh, strength, stuff like that. That isn't really quantifiable uh, and doesn't impact the sim as much, doesn't impact gameplay as much because you can alter how those attributes play out with sliders. Um, so... For me, it's, you know, I have that going for me as well. And I do feel like, uh, you know, for AI gameplay that we watch, it ends up being a lot more entertaining as well because of those factors without having overly negative effects on the sim or anything like that. As Etienne Morin has signed, which is good. We're going to move on from Christopher Thibodeau. We get a bunch of RFAs signing early. So the big question, as always, offer sheets. And, of course, we got to sign a shitload of scouts every single every single year. Coaching-wise, we're actually good, but, again, our coaches have gotten worse. Danya and Tierney. There is an A-plus in Hill. We got to go for that guy. Hendricks wasn't supposed to be a goalie coach, but ended up being one, which I'm okay with. Um, we're going to fire Danya because we know he's dropping and there's other coaches that are good. Um, so let's send out a max offer for Hill. He'll be the only coach, Ariel, that we go for. And hopefully it works out pretty well for me. Not holding my breath, but hey. You never know. You never know. 
You never know. Nice to see the Canucks come in a cup somewhere. Yeah, no kidding, right? I mean, hey, that's what video games are for, right? To, to live out fantasies. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Let's us scroll. Let's us scroll. We are almost there. To the maximum, maximum deal. There we are. I was distracted. We made it. Also, oh god. Also, for sim scoring, you change the frequency. And more often than not, I just leave it on medium because there, there's no great way to try to replicate modern NHL scoring. It's just, and from my experiences, impossible to consistently replicate because the sim from year to year has no consistency. It's my favorite NHL player of all time. It is probably Patrice Bergeron. I mean, my first favorite player was Ray Bork, and then, you know, there have been a lot of Bruins and a lot of non-Bruins since, but yeah, it is probably Bergeron. Okay. Will there be an offer sheet this year that could potentially put us into a weird spot and into a similar decision-making structure as last season? Sign all the scouts. We did get Uriel Hill, which is great. Imagine, no worries, buddy. No worries. There it is. It's Ragnarsson. But it's only a first, a second, and a third. And that, to me, is not worth it. It's not. We are going to match the offer for Liam Ragnarsson. He's consistently been our best player. He's won a Selkie. Uh, we're not moving on from Ragnarsson for that. Cole Brown takes the qualifying offer. Gabriel Dag follows suit. Maximilian Trigg is still out there. Jaden Stevenson takes the qualifying offer. Jordan Gavin. Braden Yeager. So yeah, the fish weren't really uh, weren't really biting this year. Trigg is still out there, though. And he did not get an offer prior to the start of the season. Okay. Vancon still showing up as a medium franchise, but how? How are we going to get him to perform like we need him to? I was looking for ways to optimize GM. I'm not familiar with YouTube as well as the roster, but usually lurk. Fair enough. Well, I appreciate you hanging out and being more vocal tonight. Um... But yeah, it's tough. Like, I wish there was a way to perfectly replicate the modern NHL in franchise mode, but it, it just doesn't really exist, unfortunately. I think we're going to leave Gervais unsigned. Although, given we weren't significantly better than we were last year, maybe just playing those with the best potential on the team is the right way to go. Maybe it is. But then you get into the debate of, well, low fours or medium sixes. Obviously, Trigg will have to be called up. Verdino actually greatly improved in the AHL compared to the NHL. A plus two compared to a plus five last year. So you know what? I think that answers my question of our approach from now on. I'm going to need one cap whale. I'm probably bringing a goalie. Actually, who's the... Uh, well, the, who's the oldest some bitch here? Who's under a seventy? It's Jacob Truba again. That shot slider really fucks things up. It is the most important attribute in this game. It is. And one hundred percent that pass shot is so heavily weighted. The fact it was hidden for years sucks. Even now, we can't fully control it as much as we want to. Dag and Chubarov. Two goaltenders this year. Garcia and Enkvist in the AHL. I think I'm good with that. We could technically sign Lindstrom. Only went up by one last year. But I hope, uh, what would I like to see added in the FHM? FHM? 
there's just some tweaks to the logic that they need to make the trade system primarily. Um, AJ, fair enough. But I've been happy if Carey Price was a Bruin. No, because Bruins fans treated Tuka Rask like shit. At least Hab fans appreciate Carey Price. Um, FHM, it's just a football manager style of gameplay. Let there be more to watch instead of just icons across the screen. That's one of the biggest reasons why streaming wise, I'm like, eh, is because at least with this, we can watch the AI. And even if it's brutal sometimes, it's still entertaining. Uh, your take on Luke Bordone's 28 being brought back by Ian Cole. I don't really have a take on it. The number's not retired. And I mean, you hate to say it, but I mean, Luke Bordone passed away 15 years ago. So re either retire his number or it just is what it is. Like it's, it's not Ian Cole's fault. So hopefully people aren't mad at Ian Cole and they're more mad at the Canucks organization for not officially retiring the number. I think we will leave Enkvist as the backup. More in Hamannick, Winkler, McNabb, Toivonen. Trigg obviously gets called up. Two, three, four, five, six. Or Koisinen and Lettinen are out for another Finn in Toivonen. That is going to be our defense. We are going to roll with the best possible defense we can in terms of rating. And then for the forwards... 10, 11, 12. So Brunstrom is down. And that is our 12. So the big question this season. Who plays with who? In that top six. Because putting Dorian Mangone with. Other players who should have amplified his shooting. I mean, it also doesn't help. His shooting percentage dropped by almost 7%. Lowest shooting percentage of his career. That's going to be a tough choice. Uh, Trigg and Morin, obviously not a difficult selection at all. We'll see what we do. I agree. We can go McNabb and Toyvan, and that works for me. We got to figure things out forward wise because we do have a really strong top six now. But man, going with uh, with Gavin and Stevenson didn't work. The problem is we have so many fucking shooters on this team. And again, Stevenson was the one who really benefited. This guy scored 37 goals last year, which is insane. So it makes me wonder. If we put our best playmaker, Jordan Gavin, with Mangone, and then just roll with, like, Denver Barkey or Para, someone else who's not going to put up a shitload of points, or a grinder in Tristan Abdelkader. Was it ever explained why Bruins fans hated Rask so much? Because he didn't win a cup, and Tim Thomas did. Bruins fans are, at least those type of Bruins fans, are really simple people to understand. And Gon and Gavin together. Who should be that third winger? Cole Brown, you would think, wouldn't steal too many points. He does have good physicality, by the way. 82 aggressiveness and checking. Matsumoto is a physical beast. He's not a great skater, but he'll run around and hit. Now, the argument there is what he stopped these two from generating points because he sucks. And that's an argument. Was Tim Thomas an elite goalie or a goalie that got hot? He's a goalie that got hot at the right time. I mean, he didn't sustain that in his career, and there's a reason for that. Reese DeBoer is very well-rounded. Denver Barkey is not an offensive threat. Really. He's a great face-off guy. Great skating and some good physicality. Maybe we roll with Denver Barkey. Between Mangone and Gavin. And Impera is an enforcer, but honestly, he has some offensive abilities. He's got great defensive awareness. Very, very physical. And Abdicator is a grinder, also physical, a bit better skating. I don't know who to put with Gavin and Mango. I don't. 
if we have it be Barky, I mean, Gavin's a good enough center. It wouldn't make much sense to have someone who's really good at face-offs. I think we'll rule out Barky. So it comes down to one of the five lesser players on this team. To be fair, though, the Canucks sucked that final. No, the Canucks played pretty well that final. They played good hockey. The Bruins didn't play hockey, and that's why the Bruins won the Stanley Cup final, because the Stanley Cup final isn't hockey. Okay, Matsumoto, physical as hell, can't skate. DeBoer, very well-rounded. I don't like how well-rounded DeBoer is. I'm going to rule him out. Cole Brown, again, pretty well-rounded, just like DeBoer. I think he's too good. Again, I think Dorian Para can provide a little bit more. Matsumoto can. I think it comes down to Matsumoto or Abdelkader, and I think it's going to be Reese Matsumoto. As dumb as it seems to do in some ways, we're going to run Matsumoto, Gavin, Mangone to try and get Dorian to just be the guy that lights everybody else up. Ragnarsson and Jaeger will be on the second line, meaning either Stevenson or Meechkoff are left out. So maybe it's not the best decision. But I'm just, I'm so hyper focused on the fact that Dorian needs to be a 50 goal scorer. But I don't know if he ever will be. It almost feels like a waste of Stevenson and his development from last year to have him on the third line. But he is very well rounded. Problem is, we have a very well rounded team anyway. We might have to go like DeBoer, Advocator, Matsumoto. It's Jordan Bennington, the new Tim Thomas. It's a fair comparison. I know Stevenson's listed as a third liner, but that means we're going to want to play him in the top six to try and up his value that much more. So this was the line last year that didn't quite work. So what can we do? I played what's going on. Great face-offs for Jaeger, for Ragnarsson. Barky's a great face-off guy. We can't play Denver Barky on the fourth line, though. Brown's not going to get any better. I think DeBoer makes most sense for that third line. We have a very bizarre team dynamic right now. So I was just sharing different on last gen versus current gen. Yes, different files. It's not cross-platform or cross-gen. I expect her to get into damage in Washington. I hope so. I don't think we can put Stevenson with Mangone again. So it's Mijkoff, Ragnarsson, or Jaeger. Honestly, even though Jaeger's listed as a sniper, he's good defensively and he's a good skater. Let's have it be Braden Jaeger. And apparently that's a plus five to the team. We're going to go with Mangon, Jaeger, Gavin. Meechkoff, Ragnarsson, Stevenson. That's your night, Ben. It's been pretty good. I think that's our forward core for this season. I think it is. And I'd like to think it would work out very, very well. We'll obviously optimize with a different coach. I know Dorian's showing up as an 89, but again, we need, we need him to prove he's a world beater. Because there are three more drafts in which we could have had the St. Louis Blues first round pick. But at the same time, this top six is better than I ever could have imagined. Genuinely, this forward core is good enough to make the playoffs. The defense will probably prevent us from doing so. But we are just a few defensive pieces away from being good enough to actually make something happen here. Then the AHL team will have to optimize a little bit too. But... We just need Dorian to continue 
to develop and be that guy. God damn, there's just so much pressure, though. 